The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal Word of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known. You washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory, you are the Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings.
I invite you to follow along on your bulletin insert as we take in the portions of God's Word for this Reformation Sunday. Our first lesson is taken from Daniel chapter 3. We read verses 16 through 28. Daniel had been able to tell the king the meaning of a, an important vision. And out of gratitude, he was given the first position under the king over all the land. And these three men, whose names we're going to hear multiple times in this reading, were given the top three positions under him. And, and the Chaldeans... Uh, were very jealous of the Jews and were angry at these three men. And our text tells us that they slandered these men. These men in the Aramaic, it's literally, they bit pieces of their flesh. That's how intense slander can be. And they, and they coax and compliment the king into passing a law that everyone has to bow to this God, which puts these believers in the one true God to the test and they set the pattern for us of trusting God come what may and doing what is pleasing to him we hear the word Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar we have no need to answer you about this matter since our God whom we serve does exist he is able to save us from the blazing fiery furnace so he may save us from your hand, your majesty. But if he does not, you should know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and the expression on his face changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said to heat the furnace seven times hotter than it was usually heated. He ordered some men who were soldiers from his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to throw them into the blazing, fiery furnace. So these men were bound in their coats, their pants, their turbans, and their outer clothing, their other clothing, and they were thrown into the middle of the blazing, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, those men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were killed by the intense heat of the fire. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had been tied up, fell into the blazing, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was startled and immediately stood up. He said to his advisors, Didn't we throw three men who had been tied up into the middle of the fire? They answered the king, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men who are untied and walking around in the middle of the fire, unharmed. What is more, the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing fiery furnace. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the middle of the furnace. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the royal advisors gathered together and looked at these men. The fire had no power over their bodies. Not a hair on their head was singed. Their robes were not damaged, and the smell of fire was not stuck to them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and saved his servants who trusted in God and ignored the king's command. They gave up their bodies and did not pay homage or worship any god except their god. This is the word of our Lord. If you would turn to page 84 in the front of your hymnals, we continue with the singing of our psalmody for this morning, Psalm number 46 in unison. The mighty Lord is with us. 
the God of Jacob, his heart fortress. God, his heart refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, the mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our second lesson for the day is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans. We read chapter 3, verses 21 through 28. Now, Luther had been born into a world where there was one Christian church, the, the Catholic or universal faith. And he was brought up to understand that Jesus paid for his major sins, but he was accountable to God to show his righteousness to pay for his little sins. And when he looked at himself in view of God's law, his perfect and holy law, he saw no righteousness to provide. So he was a very frustrated young man. But his father confessor got him to be a professor at the University of Wittenberg. And in preparation for class, he got the opportunity to study the Bible. And there, the Lord revealed to him the gospel that had been hidden for so long. And that is, as he said, what was like opening the gates of heaven to him. And we hear that gospel in this message. But now, completely apart from the law, a righteousness from God has been made known. The law and the prophets testify to it. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all and over all who believe. In fact, there is no difference, because all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God publicly displayed as the atonement seat through faith in His blood. God did, did this to demonstrate His justice, since in His divine restraint He had left the sins that were committed earlier unpunished. He did this to demonstrate His justice at the present time, so that he would be both just and the one who justifies the person who has faith in Jesus. What happens to boasting then? It has been eliminated. By what principle? By the principle of works? No, but by the principle of faith. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith without the works of the law. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. 
If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of this morning's gospel lesson. As this is also our sermon text, I will not have you rise to hear it read at that time. The Holy Gospel for this morning is recorded in St. Mark's account. We read chapter 13, verses 5 through 11 in Jesus' name. Jesus began by telling them, Be careful that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Whenever you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. Such things must happen, but the end is not yet. In fact, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. But be on your guard. People will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues. You will stand in the presence of rulers and kings for my sake as a witness to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Whenever they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand what you should say. Say whatever is given to you in that hour because you will not be the one speaking. Instead, it will be the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We continue with the singing of our hymn of the day, hymn 204, O God, our Lord, your holy word.
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours as we hear and meditate upon his holy word. Amen. I will again introduce our text with the reading of the first verse from Mark chapter 13, verse 5. Jesus began by telling them, Be careful that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Heavenly Father, sanctify us through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Jesus speaks to the disciples after they have come out from the temple or they're going by it. They, they point out the magnificent structure. And Jesus says, a time is going to come when not one stone stands upon another. And he begins from there to prepare them for the events that are going to take place from the time he ascends to heaven until he comes back on judgment day in glory. In other words, the end times. And that is what we enter into today in our church here with this Reformation Sunday. He prepares them and he tells them, don't be put back on your heels by the things that are taking place. He uses a phrase looking at these, these pictures of turmoil and chaos, and he calls them the beginnings of birth pains. Now, I think the rest of you guys are with me when we would say that we've never experienced birth pains. We, we hear about it, we might see it, but we don't know what it feels like. And you ladies, you girls don't know what it is like until you have gone through it. I ran across an interesting essay just by chance this week as I was preparing for the sermon and of one of the least likely places, Time Magazine had this essay and it, it was talking about my body and, and this woman was grappling with the idea of womanhood and power. She talks about being pregnant, and it's the later stage of, of pregnancy. And she, she says, I'm going to read some excerpts from this essay, because she makes some interesting points, helps us to understand. She said, no one knows what exactly triggers a woman's body to go into labor. My husband asked our OB who decided it was time, the baby or my body. Probably both, she said, as she was looking through her records. Then, then the evening that her labor began, she sat up bolt upright in bed and told her husband in a loud voice, It's happening! My body felt like it was cracking open. The pain was all-encompassing, ripping through my core and spreading to every corner of my being. I felt gripped by sudden panic. I was desperate to make the pain stop, but I was trapped. There is no going back, I said to myself. What would happen now to my baby and me? Our survival depended on the mysterious mechanisms of my body. I tried to fill my mind with blankness. I let the contraction consume me. Suddenly, a new sensation, trust. My body had gotten me this far, hadn't it? It was resilient. It had sheltered my growing son for nine months and kept his heart beating while his entire complicated self developed inside me. Now it was opening up right on schedule. I knew then that I had to let go. Despite my fear, I calmed. I surrendered. Now that's an interesting insight. Was to me, I had been there for, for the birth of both of our sons, one by natural birth, one by C-section, and, and I saw, and I was there for Cheryl, but this lady writes very well to get her, her thoughts, her emotions out. And I thought, how fitting that is for what is taking place around us in the world today and has been since the time of the apostles. Jesus tells them, be careful that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Starting with Serinthus, who was already there at the time of the apostles, 
teaching that Jesus wasn't really God, he was just a man that God had given some power to, all the way up to the present time. There is no shortage of false teachers. One of the more recent ones would be Reverend Sun Myung Moon, who in, in the early 80s claimed that he had met with Moses, with Buddha, and with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ told him he might be the Messiah. He said, well, I don't call myself the, the Messiah, the Savior, but many people do. And his plan of salvation is to have everyone intermarry with his holy family and purge sin from the world in that way. All of these false teachers, all of these false teachings, and so many times they say things that are very intriguing and, and very welcome to sinful human beings with our sinful human wisdom. And there is danger in that. For if we believe the the lie, we part from our Lord Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. And the end is tragedy eternal for us. Beyond false teachings, Jesus warns the disciples, whenever you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. Such things must happen. But the end is not yet. In fact, nation will rise against nation. This, this group, this culture will fight against this group and culture. And he says, one kingdom will war against a kingdom. A people that have this ruler will fight with a people who has this ruler. And he says, that is something that's going to be continuing to go on. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. In our day today, we have, we have people and we have groups that would, that would be willing to surrender their kingdom to another to avoid war. There are people who are so scared when an earthquake hits. Oh, the earth is going to break. It's global warming. We need to impoverish ourselves if that's what it takes to, to find the key to save the earth which is about as likely as someone coming up with a spray or a lotion that could be, a, could be applied to the lady's back of her neck or to her hands and that would alleviate the labor pains. It's not going to happen. Jesus tells us that these are just the start of labor pains. And so we see wars going on around us, the, the turmoil, the chaos, in nature, and we recognize this has been happening and it will continue to happen more and more often with greater and greater intensity until Christ himself comes back. So Jesus tells the disciples of his day and us today, don't be put on your heels by these things. It's just, it's just the beginning of birth pains. You heard, what, you heard what this lady looked at as her comfort and strength? She said, well, my body has been handling it to this point, hasn't it? It'll continue. Who has been handling things to this point for us? The mighty God who sustains all things by his powerful word. Who is it that will continue to be with us and see us through this to the end. And by, and by the way, what is the end? The end for this woman was her son. She said, my body had got me this far. She said, I was going to let it go. Despite my fear, I calmed, I surrendered. And her experience led to childbirth. She and her husband welcomed their son into the world and both mother and child were safe. We go through these labor pains now and we will continue to go through them until Christ returns and we too are welcoming a son, aren't we? He came into this world born of the Virgin Mary long ago 
to carry out his saving work on our behalf. He returned to the Father having accomplished his mission to rule all things for the benefit of his church. And at the end, as we're told toward the end of this chapter, he is going to come on the clouds of glory. And so the Lord calls upon us not to panic, not to think that we are lost, that this is the end. He says, this is just the beginning. This is going to continue until Christ returns. So do not fear and do not lose faith. Jesus says, I am with you to the very end of the age. God says, I am your heavenly father. Is not my arm strong enough to save? And so he allays our fears and, and he places something before us. You hear this message where he says, and the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. After all, when Jesus Christ comes back in glory, it is his desire to take believers to be with him forever in heaven, not to have to condemn unbelievers. But anyone who does not know him and does not trust in him will have will have that sentence to deal with forever. And so he sends us out. Instead of, instead of cowering in fear, instead of hiding in panic, he says, be about sharing the good news of the kingdom. And he tells us that there is, besides all of these natural and all of these political things going on, he says there will be persecution. It was not long after Pentecost that the, that the disciples, the apostles, and their followers began to be persecuted. And we hear the difference between those who, by their own strength, tried to hold on to Christ, like when Peter denied Jesus three times, and those who were given a message to share, like the apostle Paul when he was in front of the Roman leaders, the Roman court, and gave a wondrous confession of faith in Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world and the King of all creation. Jesus tells the disciples, whenever they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand what you should say. Say whatever is given to you in that hour because you will not be the one speaking. Instead, it will be the Holy Spirit. We celebrate Reformation as that time when the gospel, which had been hidden under man-made teachings, the, the debris of, of man-made teachings and works righteousness, the gospel had been rediscovered as the Lord led Luther to study the word and revealed it to him. We celebrate that time when once again we not only had the law that condemned us, but that the gospel which announced our salvation through faith in Christ was ours again. With that full word, with the full witness, the Lord calls upon you and me to go out. To surrender to his will and to have no fear. Because he is in control, he's watching over us, and, and these are just the things that are going to be taking place until his, re his return. I pray that these words strengthen your faith and help you to walk courageously in these unsettling times and the unsettling times that are to come. We have a part to play. The Lord has graciously given us the message and called upon us to share it with those around us, with those far and near. And the Holy Spirit will give us the words to say if we are under persecution or put into a tight spot. The Lord calls upon us to read the word. He calls upon us to study and to know what he says. But it is not up to us, our wisdom, our tenacity. The Holy Spirit will provide. With that courage, we go forward. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> Having heard the message, we join in confessing our Christian faith, making use of the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 31 in your hymnals. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you would open up your bulletin insert, we make use of the responsive reading for Reformation. And after we have, after we have said the prayers, uh, can we install the Sunday school teachers? Okay. Lord, our refuge and strength, we gather to worship and praise you for your ongoing work of reformation in your church. Lord, to you alone be glory. God of grace, in unfathomable love, you pitied us sinners and sent your Son as our substitute to deliver us from sin, guilt, death, darkness, and despair. For your grace, Lord, to you alone be glory. By your grace, you sent your Spirit to call us to repentance. Your powerful gospel rescued us from rebellion and fills us with faith in you, the true and living God. For saving faith, Lord, to you alone be glory. By your grace, we are heirs of your eternal word and trustees of the inspired scriptures, through which you proclaim your saving truth to every generation. By the scriptures, you overthrew the darkness of those who perverted your teachings and restored to your church the message of salvation by grace alone. For holy scriptures, Lord, to you alone be glory. In these last days, Lord Jesus Christ, protect your little flock. We are like sheep living among fierce wolves. Satan stalks us like a roaring lion. Defend us from false teachers who twist your word to satisfy the latest longing. For wisdom and watchfulness under attack, hear our prayer, O Lord. Never in the history of the world has your holy word been so accessible we lack only the zeal to treasure your restored truth with lives of faithful Bible study. For the noble character to search the scriptures daily, hear our prayer, O Lord. As we celebrate the Reformation that restored your pure gospel to your church, we also celebrate our common confession of the pure gospel in word and sacrament. For this unity of faith, we give you thanks, O Lord. We remember the faithful confessors of this and former generations who have passed down to us your word of truth. For these faithful servants, we give you thanks, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have been with Scott Gillespie as he underwent recent surgery. We pray that you would be with him and continue to grant him healing as he recovers. We ask that you do this according to your good will and pleasure. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
in thanksgiving for the many and amazing blessings restored to your church through the Reformation, we now commit ourselves to your care. Be our mighty fortress, our trusty shield and weapon, O Lord. Amen. We join in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Could we have our Sunday school teachers come forward at this time? Dear brother and sisters in Christ, you have, have been uh, requested and you have consented to serve as teachers over our children in the Sunday school of our congregation. This is an, an honor to get to know the children under your care and a privilege and responsibility to share with them the precious truths that the gospel shares with all of us regarding our sin and our Savior. To serve well in this capacity, it is important that you have a hunger for God's word so that all of your teaching may be anchored on that word of truth. That you have a love for those under your care, recognizing that they are the lambs in the Lord's flock. We pray that you would carry out your duties diligently. And we ask you now, if you are willing to take this task upon yourself and carry it out for the spiritual welfare of the, the souls in your care and the glory of the Lord's kingdom? If so, then answer yes, and I ask God to help me. Upon this, your, your response, I thank you and position you as Sunday school teachers in the Trinity Mount Olive Lutheran Church. We have... Uh, the great opportunity to share the news with hearts that are young and, and eager to hear of their Lord and their Savior. We join in prayer. Heavenly Father, you assure us that Jesus Christ has paid for the sins of all and has earned righteousness for everyone and that that payment of sins is real and lasting. You assure us that as we are brought to faith, you robe us with your righteousness. We pray that you would use these Sunday school teachers as your instruments to share that good news and through them, through that message, strengthen and continue the faith in those they serve. We ask this in our Savior's name. Amen. Please rise, we continue with the sacrament as found on page 33 in your hymnals. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. 
To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our distribution hymn for today is hymn 199. Our ushers will escort those forward who are prepared.
Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We join in singing our closing hymn, hymn 203, Lord keep us steadfast in your word. Good morning. Glad you could be with us this morning. We ask our guests and visitors to feel welcome to worship with us again. Uh, we have our guests registered out in the entry. Please sign that if you have not. We have on the back of our bulletin the schedule for the week, uh, starting with catechism class on Wednesday. Thursday, we've got our ladies' aid meeting, and next Sunday's schedule. Uh, next Saturday evening, please remember to turn your clocks back an hour 
so that you don't have to wait an hour for the coffee to brew on Sunday morning. Um, we have our, our Trinity Mount Olive voters meeting will be taking place after our service today. Um, November calendars are in the back of the church for you to pick up. God bless your day and your week.